Do you want to be able to be fit when you're 100 years old? Watch this. Next caller is Brad Fisher from Ohio. Brad, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thank you for taking my question. Love the show. Um, so my question is around programming. Um, you guys really opened my eyes to the importance of goal setting and building programs, you know, good programming accordingly. Clearly, you know, you've done that with the MAPS programs. So I'm 58 years old, been listing for 25 years, and my idea of uh, programming was go to the gym, lift heavy things for an hour, and, and come home. You know, based on equipment availability was sort of how I would do things. So pathetic. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for what you've taught me in the short period of time I've become aware of you. So last year, listening to Joe Rogan, he had a Dr. Peter Atia on his show. And Dr. Atia, you know, what he does is he focuses on applying science uh, to longevity. So, you know, what are the things from a uh, fitness, nutrition, stress-related things I should be thinking today to live a long and healthy life down the road? Um, so during that call, he mentioned something about this notion of a centenarian Olympics. So for maybe the listeners who aren't familiar or haven't heard of this, it's you set goals as if you're going to live to be 100 years old. So at age 100, these are the things I want to be able to do. So it could be something as simple as I want to get out of a chair unassisted to going upstairs without a railing. It could be I want to be able to play golf or walk. So, so what I've done is I've come up with my own goals. I've got 14 of them, and I'm sure I'm going to add to these. Um, but my question for you guys, you know, based on these 14 goals, knowing that I'm getting close to 60 years old, and I'm going to continue to add to them. What is the programming I should be thinking about today look like? What are the things I should be building around, you know, these goals, you know, that I'll be in 40 years from now doing, you know, and, and how does that look going forward? So doing things today, five years, 10 years, and is there any MAPS program adaptations out there that, that could accomplish or help me accomplish these goals? Yeah, I love this question. Let's <laughs> yeah. hear the, let's hear the 14 goals. Yeah. <laughs> rapid fire all right so uh, let's see uh i want to be able to get up off the floor under my own power okay i don't want to be able to walk up and down the stairs with um a 10 pound bag of grocery in each hand um be able to lift a 30 pound suitcase uh, and put it in an overhead bin i continue i expect to be traveling at 100 um get out of a pool without a ladder get into the pool without a ladder um, I'm assuming this will be a great grandchild, but uh, lifting a 30 pound child off the ground, um, be able to stand up off the ground without using my hands. Um, I want to be able to ride my motorcycle. Um, let's see. I want to be able to play golf. How about just tying my shoes? I want to be able to bend over at the way, standing up and tie my shoes. I want to be able to paddleboard. I love to paddleboard. I love to mountain bike. Uh, this one, I think you guys will like. I want to be able to carry my beach chair and a cooler of beer in each hand and be able to walk to the beach and be able to get in and out of the chair without any assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very so, specific. I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I like these. Okay, so. I love these. So there's there's two things based on those goals, two things that are going right. to help you. Number one is to build and maintain strength. strength. Yeah, almost every single thing you said what would prevent you from doing every single one of those is a loss of strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. So strength training is going to be the foundation. The second thing, there are some skills in there that you listed mm -hmm. like paddle boarding, for example, the best thing you can do to keep those skills is to practice those skills on a regular basis. So it's actually quite right. simple. Now, where does the complexity come in? Well, the complexity comes in because from now till a hundred, you know, that's, that's over 40 years. You know, you're, things happen in life. Um, you know, sometimes you get sick. Sometimes there's more stress, less stress. You work out more or less. The, the idea is to be able to modify your training in the moment to improve the quality of your life in the context of, of the current moment. Okay? So that means sometimes you're going to need more mobility work. Other times you're going to need less mobility work. Sometimes you're going to train heavier. Sometimes you're going to train lighter. Um, I would say form and technique should always be the, the, the focus. But that's true no matter what. Form and technique are always going to be uh, number one for anybody, regardless of their goals, because that's where you maximize results, minimize things like risk of injury. And that's pretty much it. So as you get closer to that age, you just have to, you're probably going to have to modify things here and mm -hmm. there and place more focus on some stuff. Like 
like, oh my God, I noticed that, uh, you know, I'm strong, but I'm getting tighter. It's harder for me to bend over and tie my shoes. Well, now we're going to incorporate more flexibility and mobility training, you know, or I have the strength to walk to the beach, holding my beach chair and beer, yeah. but I start to get out of, out of breath. Oh, I want to incorporate a little bit more stamina training so I can, you know, maintain my cardiovascular fitness. So, but, but ultimately what all the things you listed were strength and skill. That's yeah. it. I think too, like uh, based off of like just focusing on strength, uh, people could get into a, a point where they just think about, um, you know, your, your regular kind of compound lifts or, um, just, um, basically lifting, uh, in inside, you know, the constraints of a gym in terms of like the machines, but really you have to think and expand upon that strength in terms of like in different directions. And so, uh, for, to, to maintain, I guess, I hate to use the word functional strength, but really it's about functional right. strength. It's about expressing, um, you know, all the capabilities your joints have, but, but doing it in a way where, uh, you maintain that kind of stability and control, uh, and if you can focus on just moving in different directions, rotating, uh, and expressing that movement with strength, it's going to, it's going to carry through basically any pursuit. So strength's at the root of it all. Uh, and, and so we talk about mobility and we talk about, you know, having, uh, restrictions. Most of that restriction is just because of repetitive stress and like doing the same thing all the time. So, uh, to be able to kind of weave in from, um, doing this by loaded, you know, heavy strength training focus, like those foundational type of workouts, but then also, uh, you know, complementing that with rotational movements and, and things that you can express in different directions, I think is paramount. I, I, I can be a little more specific. I think, I think, <clears throat> you know, the things I heard in there was, uh, I need the ability to be able to, to step up and stabilize. I need to be able to get up off the ground, like a Turkish get up. I need to be able to lift uh, a child up over my head potentially. So like a, you know, a overhead press or a circus press. These are all movements that would be, and then uh, there's, uh, you need rotational strength for paddle boarding and something else you said that, that triggered rotational for me. Uh, MAPS performance is like literally has every aspect of that in it. So mm -hmm. if, if I were to build a routine, the strength training routine that was going to you know benefit or carry over into all these these pursuits it would look much like that now to sal's point it would be modified through my life so in the perfect world it looks just like maps performance in the state of high stress other shit going on maybe potential injury happened 20 years later of course it, it, i'm going to modify and change some of those things but the elements in that program, like there's there's an endurance aspect to that for stamina building in there. There's a rotational component in there. I believe we have Turkish get ups in that yeah, program. Yeah, and there's even an explosive component, which is something to even talking with somebody like a Joe DeFranco is something I didn't really consider for, you know, as you're aging. But uh, to be able to maintain the ability to move quickly uh, will prevent a lot of potential injury down the road as well. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard me say this before on the podcast, but that I believe that to be the single program of all the programs that I would be okay with one of my clients doing forever. And just because we, we did such a good job. It's so balanced. Of, yeah, of, of balancing mobility, rotational, unilateral. Like, I mean, it really covers, and it's phased out in four phases instead of three. So, and you get even some stamina building in there for cardiovascular health. Like, it really encompasses you know, in my opinion, overall health and longevity better than any program we've ever written. And so I would literally live in that. And that doesn't mean you can't take exercises here and there and exchange them with something else you like doing, right. or you, you right. have more specific to a sport or something you're doing, but really like the, the nuts and bolts of that program, it really addresses all the things that, that you said really well, I think. Do you have that program? Uh, I don't. I have anabolic and I've got um, prime pro. Um, okay. We'll send it well, to you. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll send that one over to you for sure. So, so let me ask you something though. With the with the explosive, uh, you know, getting close to sixty, how do you incorporate that without injuring yourself when you haven't really done a lot of that for years and years and years? Because I've tried certain things, mm -hmm. and it, invariably, it seems like I, I create more problems than benefits. You're just you're just doing the wrong stuff, and you're probably going too far. So, yeah. like an explosive movement could literally be you just jump in yeah. place. Don't even land. You, you just jump up, you know, like that's one. Okay. Um, or it could be moving something a little stuff. faster. Yeah. So you have to scale it 
to mm-hmm. something okay. that's appropriate. So you might be looking at like athletes training and be like, okay, I'm going to jump up on a big box and jump down. That's going to, that might right. be too much right now. So it's got to okay. be, it's got to be appropriate and it could start real low. But the point that Justin made with that is whatever skill you stop practicing, you end up losing. So if you mm-hmm. stop practicing anything that involves any kind of explosiveness to it, then you'll lose it completely. So. Well, and too, like oh. think about any time you're in a, a predicament where you you drop something or you know you have to move quickly out of the road or whatever it is, you slip right. on something. Okay, to be able to you know collect yourself rather quickly and be able to have that kind of control and strength to do that. Um, that's yeah. that's what I'm Good kind point. of talking about with being able to move quickly out of situations and recognize that, have your body kind of respond appropriately. Yeah, think of it this way, Brad. Uh, when you do explosive training, don't mm-hmm. think that you're working out when you're doing it. Think you're practicing a movement. So it should feel like, oh, I can do this. It should not feel like, Oh my God, I can barely yeah. do this. Yeah, because then you're asking for uh-huh. for trouble. Well, a lot of people uh, we assume like uh, I mean, because a lot of plyometrics have well, a lot of jumping up and down, left or right. Swings are great, but there's option. other forms mm-hmm. of explosive training that don't require up and down jumping or left or right jumping hard. That's probably the most risky or dangerous for the average client, especially yeah. in advanced age, blowing a knee out, a hip going, something like that, because they do too much too fast. But you can do, uh, in fact, one of the exercises in MAPS Performance is a uh, reverse lunge to an overhead press. Like that, mm. you're, you're never leaving the ground in that movement, but you can resist the weight down slowly and then explode the weight up. And that's okay. you're now getting the benefits of explosive training without you know jumping in the air and landing. Train, on- train within your capabilities. Uh, this is true for any form of exercise. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then if once, once those capabilities expand, then you train within those new capabilities. So, well, and I'd like to comment, I'd like to comment too, that I think you made Adam, it's, you know, if there's certain exercises that I like incorporate those. So for instance, for my, my cooler of beer, I've been doing, um, you know, the suitcase carry, right. Yes, you know, I take that. a 45 Perfect. pound plate, right. I can carry 45 pound plate. I can carry probably at least two cases of beer. Um, <laughs> you know, and for, for paddle boarding, I do like single leg Romanian deadlifts. I mean, talk about balance and love that. Um, yeah. You know, love that. Yeah. And okay. One of the okay. best ways to, to work on capabilities like that is to do, um, sports and activities. I mean, you keep paddle boarding I and mean, you're going to, you're going to maintain the ability to paddle board, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, Brad, we'll send over mass performance. So you'll have it. You guys are the best. Thanks so much. All you right, got it. Right. Yeah, good one. Yeah, aside from the common like heart disease, cancer, right? If if you aside from those things, if you look at people as they age, their the challenges that they uh, that they come upon, the things that tend to kill them uh, are all strength related, weakness. So you look at balance, falling down, like that's all strength. You just don't have strength. And if you've I've worked with a lot of people in this mm-hmm. age group, and you can see it once they start to trip, and they try to catch themselves, they don't have the strength. Yeah. To support themselves. And it's like a slow motion fall. Boom. Well, and they fall down. And well, then the bones aren't strong. The joints aren't strong. They break something. And then it's it's real bad. So well, it's yeah. like maintain strength. This is the reason why the the squat has been touted as the king of all exercises for so long. Because if you can maintain a good, deep, full range of motion squat for your whole life, like you're going to be able to do a lot. Of, yeah, you're firing on all cylinders. Yes, it just there's, there, it requires so much coordination from top to bottom and strength and mobility to do that. That if you incorporate that and you get and you stay strong in that till your late years, you're going to be pretty capable. And that doesn't mean you're going to be great with rotational strength. And there's mm. obviously aspects that you can, but that's a, a goddamn good foundation right there is to be able to squat deep all the way into your eighties and nineties. Yeah. And to kind of add on to like the moving fast part of it, um, there's ways to do that with less impact. And I think that's, yeah. you know, that's a concern, especially like as you go further and you haven't, you know, been incorporating that enough and it's something that, you know, your body's going to have to kind of relearn, you know, there's, there's ways to, um, progress that and and you know using bands is, is a way to do that you know safe and effectively like there's machines there's even like so this is where i would actually like probably take a client like that and we'll do like um you know assault bike or something we'll just slowly kind of ramp our speed up with that or yeah. like a row machine exactly you know? look you're not going to go from squatting zero pounds to 300 pounds right. just like you wouldn't go from doing no explosive movements to doing to just, moving as fast as you can yeah so i just want to put that it's literally like there. this it's literally like this if this is new to you 
just move a little faster, just a little bit, and get I, and get good at that. I and then move I, a little faster and get good. good I at just that. see a person thinking, you know, three foot. Yeah, exactly. Jump boxes, yeah. and it's like, no. and and ice skaters. Those two movements, no. I'm not even wasting. That'd be my like time. looking at a champion powerlifter and be like, oh, that's how I, what I need to do now. Yeah, know, there's no there's weights. no reason to even do that at all. You can make a a, a sing, single step up an incredible explosive movement. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you can do a standing and, squat, just do it a little faster. Yeah, like, that's it. It's that's just it. speed. You just move a little bit faster.